Um, there's a lot of buzz at the moment uh, everywhere you go about the potential opportunities uh, of using data, presumably in a new way, because data's been around for uh, many millennia to date. Uh, the key question is really how can we realize these opportunities and at DFID, as for many of you here, our focus is on realizing these for international development and for improving the lives of the poor. Can we make the data revolution, which is a key call within the high level panel of eminent persons report, can we make it effective and sustainable? And I think I come from the research part of, of DFID. I oversee most of the research that DFID commissions centrally. Um, and for us, the sustainable aspect is a really important one. Um, the policy community will make some very rapid gains in the short term, but some of these key uh, tough research type questions will still be there. And it's for us, uh, for our part of DFID really to, to address those. So the sustainable part of this is important to us. Um, who are the providers, who are the users, who are the intermediaries? We're still working very much on those questions. Um, I was asked to do two things, so I'm going to do, um, do both of them, uh, which is uh, to be expected. I'm going to do, add some reflections on the day, uh, and for me to do that, I'm using the eyes and ears of, of Andre and Kerry here, uh, as I wasn't able to be at the earlier sessions. So we've had a chat and discussed some of the main topics and issues that have come out during the day. So I'll run through some of those. And then in the second uh, section, the five minutes or so, I'll go through three points that have really come out of our internal discussions at, at DFID. Um, not many solutions in those sections really, but just three important points that we're focusing on, asking us some difficult questions and seeing uh, in our role in the international community what we can do about those. So today's um, sessions, what are the, the, the main points that have come out um, of the discussions that, that you've had? I mean, one that I think is, is really important is the capacity to engage in this debate. Um, whatever you are from a, from a stakeholder, from an individual, from a community, from a data provider, from a data user, um, do you have the capacity to engage and realize the opportunities that big data and open data um, promise or are there? as a potential to promise. What should policymakers do differently? Well, if you ask any individual, of course, they come up with a whole list of what policymakers should do differently. Um, the question really is, um, for us who are advising the policy community, um, what is the advice that we need to be giving? What is the information that they need in order to make decisions to act differently? And that will take time, I think, to realize. At the moment, my view would be that many of those who are engaging with these issues in the policy community haven't quite formed their questions yet. They can see the opportunities, they can recognize the importance, um, but they're still working through the questions that they should be asking. So for us in the evidence in the research community, we need to be providing information on which they can start asking and forming those questions. What should we be measuring? Of course, in the real world, you can measure many things. Should it be processes? Should it be outcomes? Almost certainly, it should be a combination of the two. But where should the balance of effort lie? And what is the role of digital versus other data? Are there inadvertent biases that are brought in when using digital data alone? Um, are there gender biases that need to be addressed? Are there diversity issues that also need to be considered? And then lastly, a key issue that seems to have come out, um, particularly in the sessions just before this one, what is the role of public-private partnerships within the use of open data, within the use of big data sets? Um, is there a different way of working that will help realize some of the benefits of using data in an open and transparent way? And how do we get there? How do we realize mutual benefit for all stakeholders, whether they're from the public or private sector? So from a DFID perspective, I think there's three main issues that have come out of our own reflections, and I think some of these will overlap with the discussions that you've, that you've had today. I mean, we've seen in the last year or so uh, a big push almost on what can be provided in the way of data, whether it be through big data sets or be through new data sets generated on mobile platforms. But we try to keep a focus on who's going to use it. And who's going to use it is a complex and difficult challenge. Do those potential users have the skills 
to use the data and information that are being generated? Are the systems there to maximize the opportunities for some of the poorest people in the world to realize the benefits of open and big data? And if, on behalf of DFID, there's bits of, of there are some programs or there's gaps in, in, in knowledge in using data that we need to fill, we need to identify those and work with partners in order to, to get those working. The statistical capacity building that DFID has been funding uh, in many countries um, for some years now would fit into this category, but I anticipate there'll be new uh, and different um, requirements on educating and enhancing the skills of the users of data. One example of an initiative that we have got going in the last year or so, and the credit here is very much due to Kerry who's led on this, is something called GODAN, which is the Global Open Data for Agriculture and Nutrition Initiative that started as a G8 2012 commitment from the Camp David Agreement, um, was taken up by the UK government um, during the 2013 G8 presidency, and is now in October, as of October of last year, being realized in a formal agreement that is attracting, well, it seems like more signatories each, each day, but it's, it's 60 or 70 international and national organizations that have now signed up to a high level sort of policy focused agreement to increase the use of open data for agriculture and nutrition gains. Uh, and obviously at DFID, our focus is on gains within low income settings. That's, a, that, that's an important um, but very high level initiative. The hard work will come in the next few years as those partners work together to realize the benefits of open data for agriculture and nutrition. So keeping a focus on users I think is really important. Let's not, let's not make this too much of a data push. It has to be a, a, a joint and even and a balanced venture that combines the ability of suppliers to supply data and analyze data in a new way, uh, but also involves time put into making the users of data uh, more empowered and better able to realize the benefits of that information. Number two, I think it's important to be clear about the benefits of either open data initiatives or big data initiatives. Uh, what works? Uh, can we evaluate and document and communicate the political, economic and social benefits of small or large scale initiatives? Clearly, that's something when we fund any program within DFID, we're looking ahead to how we evaluate success. We're defining very carefully what success means, uh, and in due course, hopefully, making progress uh, within that program with those success criteria. At the early stage of any, what could be called a bandwagon, but any initiative or any enthusiasm for a new initiative, there's lots of ideas being generated. Um, there's enormous um, scope, I think, for being more aspirational uh, than there is um, realistic. Of course, that's a good phase to go through, but then you settle down into the harder questions of when you put investments into open data or big data initiatives, what are gonna be the, the returns that will come down the line? Who will realize the benefits? What will they be? Uh, and after the event, can we learn from what works? And also, can we learn from initiatives which didn't work or, in or indeed failed entirely? So we need to be quite clear when uh, moving to an implementation phase within open data or big data initiatives on how we evaluate success uh, and hopefully in due course, we'll then get stories of success um, that come out from these initiatives and we need to share those and learn from those. And then point number three, my final one, um, is always an aspiration to be equitable and transparent in data and information access whilst respecting data privacy. And by data privacy, I mean privacy in the, in the broadest sense, whether that be individual data privacy or whether that be commercial considerations. The high level panel, when talking about poverty, used this phrase, leave no one behind, uh, as many of you will know. And we can make the same sort of argument within the, the open data, big data movement. Uh, in an international development context, what we're trying to avoid is increasing the digital divide. We're trying to bring people um, along with the opportunities that can be realized from these initiatives. So in conclusion, um, all of you within this room will be aware uh, from today and from the, uh, the day to day activities that you engage with of the potential opportunities for using data in new and exciting ways and the information that can be derived uh, from new techniques, new technologies and new ways 
of doing that. We will, I think, move quite rapidly into a number of discrete activities that involve both the suppliers of data, those that are in that intermediary brokering function, uh, and importantly, the users of data. In an international development context, there are enormous uh, potentials. Um, it is our responsibility as individuals from our own organizations to help to try to realize in a small way some of that potential. And finally, just to finish, of course, it's tempting at the beginning of a big new phase um, of work to think about trying to get things perfect from the beginning. It seems to me that nothing at the beginning will ever be perfect immediately, but you have to start somewhere. And I think in a sense, this is an area where this applies as much as, as much as any. We all have many questions in our own minds, but as individuals, we've got to start somewhere. Our organizations have got to start somewhere. And at least I think we know roughly uh, in which direction we wish to go. So thanks very much for your attention. Andre, I'm happy to answer questions at the appropriate time. Thank you, Tim. Um, let's do that first. <laughs>